My name is Ipati Mukua. I am the Chief Executive of South African Women in Leadership. What an honor and a privilege to have you as one of the inaugural trailblazers of the Savo Trailblazers um, Awards as a, as a finalist. How do you feel about that? Like, I, it was completely unexpected. Um, it, it was a complete, but very, uh, complete surprise, but very welcome at that. Uh, it, it's, it's still surre- surreal to me. I, I think about it and I look at the women on there and I, I, I have these thoughts like, uh, they're still gonna call me and say, we made a mistake. Uh, <laughs> You're not supposed to be on the list, but it, it, it's such a welcome surprise. I, 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 it's still going to take a while for me to believe that I, I made it amongst those amazing uh, women that are on, on, on that list. Listen, I can assure you right now that going through all of your profiles, that even yours this evening as we were going through it again with Dr. Andy, we're quite... Uh, privileged and honored to have you here. What a trailblazer you are. Dr. Andy is my co-pilot, so he'll be doing the interview. He is from the BRAF Leadership Institute. And if you do make it to the top um, 10, basically the, 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 the winners of, of this inaugural awards, you get to win his book, which I, I absolutely <laughs> think is amazing. So maybe get your people voting, but you really, you deserve a seat at this table. So just a little bit so that, you know, people are not wondering why am I so excited and um, yeah, passionate about your, your profile. What is it that you do? Who is Dr. Kolelwa? Um, what is it that I do? Um, I, 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 I brand myself as a, as a, as a, as a, as a former scientist. Uh, I say this uh, because uh, from the very last day or the, the day of my graduation, I swore to myself that I'll never get back to a lab again. And for reasons I will discuss with you on another day, but then I, I made it my personal mission statement to make sure that every other woman that, that, that gets into the same path gets into an environment that is transformed, that is that is ready to receive them, that is supportive of them. So I'm, I'm a scientist by training. I have a PhD in chemistry from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. And, um, but what I've diverted into is mostly research and innovation management. So from, from my graduation, I have taken that path to make sure, as I've alluded to earlier, that um, the research space is, is ready, especially for, for, for Black scientists, for, for young scientists, for upcoming um, young women that have a voice, that have a skill, and um, just to make sure that those platforms and supports are, are there for them. So that, that's, that, that's how I, I describe myself. Well, that's, that's incredibly amazing. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Andy, over to you for the interview. Thank you. Kolelo, tell us a little bit about the Brightest Young Minds Initiative. You're an alumni of that association. How did you get involved there? <laughs> yes, uh, so it was um, 2000 and it must have been 2009 and uh, between 2009 and 2010. Um, so they are a non-governmental organization that, that, that really looks at um, young people that are doing meaningful things in, in, in their communities, um, young people that are making a change uh, in, 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 in their communities. And at the time, I, still, I was still um, doing my postgraduate um, studies at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So I, I applied um, for that program uh, detailing uh, the, the, the involvements I was, I was busy with at that time, besides my, 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 my scientific work. And I got chosen and um, it was such an enriching experience um, to learn because, you know, when you're a science student, uh, mostly and traditionally, what, what, what you're trained to do is to think like a scientist and um, almost fellowship with your like, uh, like-minded like science people. But with that experience, I got to meet social scientists, I got to meet economists, I got to meet uh, people in the financial service who were doing amazing things. And those things that they were doing, most of them were outside um, their comfort zone or their area of um, primary training. I think from, from back then, 
I knew that uh, my my purpose in life and what I wanted to do was way bigger than uh, the primary platform, which is um, which is science. Which uh, from then on, I've never looked back, and I have dabbled. If you look at my profile, I've almost been all around, but at the same time maintaining uh, that identity of um, being in the scientific domain, but doing other things that can enhance uh, my experience in, in, in that primary field. Talk to us about that transition from research, being a research scientist, and now uh, segueing into research management. Mm -hmm. uh, why have you made that transition and, and, and how does that look for you in the future? The nature of the of the scientific world is that the, the outputs from your research take a while to get to the point where where where, where you need to be, and before they do that, uh, there's a whole lot of challenges that you to go through that. So I asked myself uh, that reflective questions that you have a PhD, so what? And um, in in my interrogating myself and and finding it and finding out what is it that I really like, um, I, I drew myself um, a list of what it is that I enjoy and what I want to make a difference in the world, it, like sort of a legacy. What what would we be remembered by? And on top of that was that um, I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about young women. And uh, I'm passionate about transformation. I'm passionate about um, just being intentional about changing the status quo in terms of research. So out of those pillars, I said maybe my role, maybe where I will find the most joy is to make sure that that sector or that space is ripe and it's ready especially for young black scientists, which, which is not, not transformed at this point. And I, 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 I live every day thinking and asking myself, have you, have, you, have you made a difference in somebody else's life with the decisions that you have taken? Would it be a better environment for, for, for young upcoming uh, scientists? And I think that gives me meaning that beyond uh, the scientific body of knowledge that I possess, do I make it a, a better environment for, 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 for young women who want to venture into, into, into the space, uh, who want to, to, to make the changes that I think science and uh, technology is able, is able to do? And uh, my answer is, is that every day, yes, um, we continue. There's still a long way to go. But um, for those that have made that decision for themselves, they need people like myself to make sure that um, they, they, they have a better experience, they have a more transformed, they have more, have a more inclusive um, environment, they have a voice, um, they have somebody who looks like them and sounds like them that, that, that understands their journeys, that understands their challenges and that champions uh, for their challenges to be on the main table of decision makers. So, so, so th that that has been my thinking uh, with regards to 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 the to the change um, uh, of 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 of, of uh, career path. There's no doubt that 2020 has been a tough year for our matriculants and for our undergraduates. What would you say to the young black women who aspire? to move into research, particularly in the area of chemistry? And mm -hmm. what recommendations could you give in terms of transformation, particularly in an area that is still, I think, bottlenecked in some areas around giving these young women that you've mentioned opportunities? My assertion is that uh, they must go for it. They must really, they must really go for it. I, I mean, I, I, I see and speak to, to, to young people on a, on, a, on a regular basis. And uh, most of our history somehow has left indelible marks in, in, in our psyche as, as black people and especially as black people in science, in, in the science world. We doubt ourselves so much. We don't see a lot of us in this space. The, the scientist in South Africa is a White, uh, white male, or in, in a few uh, in a, in a few uh, circumstances, it's a white woman. It's barely it's barely the the the, the, the black person that the black woman. So with 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 the work that I've been involved in and in in, in 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 associations like 
black uh, women in science. We, 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 we want to cultivate that culture. We want to make a change in terms of that shift in the mindset to say, yes, black child, yes, black girl, there are people that have been successful in this field that have gone up to master's and PhD level. There are people who are professors in this field. There are people who are successful in